So in the previous video, we saw how we would go about creating a new database and setting up a table with the correct data types. And we said that those data types were crucially important. And that is because if you get the data types wrong, when you import the data, um, you will not be able to manipulate that data in the way that the exam requires. This is absolutely vital. If you get it wrong, you have to delete the table and start again. If you don't do the first step correctly, the rest of the exam becomes impossible and you will get zero for this section. So it's very important that you can do this first step properly. So once I've set up my table correctly, I'm now going to go and open my CSV file. So I'm going to inside LibreOffice save file and open and i'm going to go and have a look for my document in the folder that i have saved it um it is over here okay so here is my file now it asks me about my file. If I take this little tick off here next to comma, you'll see what this file actually looks like. It's a whole series of text because a CSV file is a text file. It's a series of text and each piece of information, so each field is separated with a comma and each record starts on a new line. So, the different fields are being separated by a comma, hence the name comma separated. And if I tick the little box that says comma, I should get everything turning up in nice neat columns. I've never ever seen Cambridge ask you to import data that is not separated by commas. So you can be pretty sure that that will work. If it doesn't work, you could try one of the others. Um, and you can see the tab doesn't work on this one, semicolon doesn't work, a space doesn't really work. So the comma separated variable is the one that we want. Once you're happy with that, you can say, okay. So here I have a spreadsheet. I want to go and edit this. Now, there are two issues with this data. Because it's a comma separated variable file, there is no formatting. So at this point, my computer doesn't know that this information is a date. The rest of the information, if it's purely numbers like this field, my, my spreadsheet program automatically picks that up. And if it's purely text or a, a mixture of numbers and text, so alphanumeric, you will see that it also picks it up. So numbers are right aligned, text is left aligned. So all of those are fine except for this one, which is the date field. I need to tell the computer that this is a date. So I'm going to highlight column E. I'm going to go to format in my menus, and I'm going to change the number format to date so that the computer understands this is a date I'm putting in. The next thing I'm going to do, this column H and column J, I had a problem, well, I didn't have a problem, but I, when I put my, come on, okay, when I put my data into, oh, my, my data types into my database, I said that these two columns were going to be Boolean fields. Now, if I import this data like this, I will get an error because the computer is not going to understand that Y is a tick in that box and n is no tick what the computer will understand is the values minus one for a tick or for a yes value or zero for no tick or a no value so i'm going to have to change these y's and n's to minus ones and zeros in the cambridge exam they give you data that has minus ones and zeros you don't need to worry about this but this is just a problem with this particular exercise in this particular book so i'm going to change these i'm going to go edit and i'm going to find the find and replace function and i'm going to replace the y's with minus ones 
Now I could do this very carefully and go find next, find next, find next. Um, and that's probably what I should do. But, oh, sorry, find next and replace it. But that's going to take me rather a long time. So I'm going to say replace all. And it'll go through that entire section that I selected. And it will replace everything. Um, if I look under other options, it's only looking at what I've selected. This is why you need to be a little bit careful with replacing things. If you haven't ticked that box, it'll go through everything that's on the page and change every single Y and every single N, which you don't want to happen. So I'm going to go and highlight these two again. So I highlight that one. I'm holding down the command key on my uh, Mac. If I was on a PC, I would hold down probably the control key to be able to highlight two different columns. So I'm going to go and do the same thing now. I'm going to change N and I'm going to change it to zero. And I'm going to say replace all great stuff. So now I have got two columns of zeros and minus ones. And hopefully my date is now going to behave itself as well. Now, I'm going to go and copy all of this data. So I'm going to highlight the whole lot from A1 to N45. I highlighted the whole lot. I right click, I say copy. And now I go back to my database. I right click and I say paste. And I hope. Now, because the, everything's already there. Um, I've already set that all up. I am going to be appending data. That means adding data on. It's blank at the moment. There's nothing in there. But I'm going to go and add um, the, da the data that I have from the CSV file. Now I'm going to say next. I'm going to check now that my fields are all in the right order and the right thing is going in the right place. And once I'm finished with that, oh, what does that say? Minus 11. That's wrong. Okay, let me go back. Where did that minus 11 come from? Oh, it was phantom. Okay, so I've still got that. Um, I've still got it copied, so I don't have to copy it again. So let me go and paste it again and see if I can fix it. I really don't know why it says minus 11. Right, once I'm done, I'll say create. And I don't get any error messages. So I go, whew, thank goodness. If I get an error message at this point, I need to go and fix it. And I'll show you how we can fix it. So if I double click on there, I can open this up. You will see the um, date of birth is all beautifully formatted. That's great. And this column and this column have my little tick marks um, in the correct place. And that's all fantastic as well. So all my data is beautifully imported into my table. If I had made a mistake, so here's one I did where it hadn't imported the orchestra information because I hadn't changed the zeros and the minus ones. What I could do, whoops, sorry. What I can do is highlight the top left hand corner, press delete on my keyboard and I can get rid of all of my data in one go. I could then go and recopy and repaste that data in there. Okay, or I could make a change to my data types if that was the problem um, and then go and import again. So to go back to where I change the data types, I right click on it. I go to edit and there is that table that I had before where I could change 
the various data types. So I can do that at any point or by double clicking on it, it'll open the data, the table with the data inside. So that's how to import data. I hope that you are now well on your way to creating databases.